This is one of the strangest places on Earth. It's the inside of a vast, sophisticated machine, which is driven by an ancient technology. It's a tanker with a cargo that can power London for about a week. A cargo equivalent to the energy of 55 nuclear bombs. This huge ship is carrying liquefied natural gas, millions of litres of the stuff. At room temperature, it turns into a highly flammable gas. That's why people want it. The liquid inside these tankers becomes gas for cooking and heating your home. Creating the technology to transport it is very complex, yet these ships owe their existence to some surprising connections. Kitchen cutlery. The father of evolution. And there it goes. The world's first steam engine. World War II fire engines. And air-to-air -air refueling. Transporting natural gas around the planet is a big business. This super tanker is larger than the Titanic and is designed to carry natural gas all over the globe. She's a big ship, yeah, so you know everything about her is going to be super scale, but it's only when you get close up do you realize how big. Admittedly, I'm not the tallest chap you'll meet, but it would make even him feel small. The propeller alone is more than five times my height and weighs 48 tons. I didn't come here simply to feel small. I can do that anywhere. I came here because I want to see how these ships shift huge quantities of gas all around the globe. They have vast tanks, but getting inside them is very tricky. The ships have to be in dry dock and the tanks have to be completely purged of any trace of their hazardous cargo. This is the inside of one of the tanks. And as far as we know, nobody's ever actually filmed inside one of these before. That seems a shame, because look at it. All you need is one light, one camera. You can make a sci-fi movie and listen to it. That echo is real, analog, not a digital effect. Real sounds bouncing around this cavernous tank. There's room for 34 million litres of liquid gas in here. The equivalent volume of water would allow the average British home to flush the toilet for 1,200 years. And there are four of these, each at minus 160 degrees inside. Just another world. It's just crazy. Just like oil, natural gas is a fossil fuel found where ancient organisms decomposed. It can be shifted in pipelines, but they are expensive and impractical for crossing oceans. Instead, engineers had to work out how to transport it by ship. That's a challenge when you remember that natural gas ignites at any air temperature found on Earth. To learn how you transport gas safely, I went to a high security research facility in northern England. This is a blast proof chamber 
a sort of industrial scale oven. Right, well, this device here is a supply of gas up through this tube here. This is an igniter, it'll create a spark, light the gas, and it'll burn. It's got a lot of gas, a lot more than you're used to at home, but don't worry, this place we're in can take it. This is a specialized blast testing facility. They use it to test industrial safety equipment on a massive scale, so it'll be okay. Nevertheless, I think I'll get out while we light it. Since someone had left the oven door off, we had to retreat to a safe distance. Cue the spark. Five, four, three, two, one. Release gas. That's just a few litres of gas. Imagine a cargo of many millions of litres that could be ignited by the tiniest of sparks. That cargo has the energy equivalent of 55 atomic bombs. Spilling it could be a massive disaster. But there has never been any major accident, and the operators plan to keep it that way. Fortunately, there's a simple solution. Turn the gas into a liquid. As a liquid, it can't catch fire. And what's more, it takes up much less space. If the cargo were in gas form, the tanker would need to be impossibly big. It would have to be 600 times more voluminous, which would make it 10 times longer than this ship. Two and a half thousand meters, a mile and a half. To make the gas liquid, you chill it to minus 162 degrees Celsius. That's nearly twice as cold as it ever gets in Antarctica. But it only has to warm a little bit to turn back into highly flammable gas. So there is a second line of defense. Normally the cargo is the other side of these walls tens of millions of litres of it. And remember, that's in liquid form. Expand it into gas ready to use, and it's billions of litres. And if any of the liquid made its way and leaked out and turned back into vapour, well, that could be a big problem. But it doesn't, thanks to a pre-war mail plane. 